Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, um, I'm thrilled uh, with the crowd that we have. I wish we had a little bit more space, but um, rest assured this is being taped and we do intend to have another meeting. Um, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Carol Houck and I'm City of Newark's um, City Manager. Um, so thank you again for coming on behalf of our Mayor and Council. We're thrilled that you're here. Um, our citizens, most of you I hope are citizens of, the, of Newark and you're here to get some information from the data centers, um, some factual information. There's been a lot of information out there, I know. Not all of it has been factual. Um, tonight's the night to hear about it. Again, um, we are videotaping this, and it will be on our ch Newark TV, cha TV 22. Anybody in the city of Newark, turn on channel, channel 22. And over the next few weeks, we will have um, this continually airing. It will also be on our website. Okay, so if you don't catch anything tonight, you will um, have the opportunity to do, to do so. Um, I was told to point out where the restrooms are. There's one over here that's um, co-ed, and then there is two, there's restrooms downstairs, just in case. I'm excited that the data center is here tonight to tell their story, tell about their project, and to be able to um, have you ask questions so that we can respond to them. I think it's already been mentioned that there's quite an uh, area for you to write your questions at the, at the rear. Please do so. There will also be time for you to write some additional questions if something comes up during the presentation. Um, we, Representative Paul Bombach is here and he will serve as our um, moderator for the questions. And um, so please feel free to um, take advantage of that. I'm very hopeful that the majority of your questions will be answered by the presentation that the data center has planned for us tonight. I'm going to introduce a couple other um, people that we're happy to have here tonight. Representative John Kowalko. Senator Townsend has um, been kind enough to join us tonight. And I'm hoping I'm not missing anybody, but we do have Councilman Moorhead, City of Newark Councilman Moorhead, Councilman Markham, Councilman Chapman, Councilman Tuttle, and I think Councilman Haddon has, has come in. I think that's it. County Council Person Tim Sheldon, Sheldon is also here. So there's a lot of people who represent you that are here and um, to get the information that you all came to get tonight. I also want to mention that rep all of your representatives, their contact information is available at either of the tables that we have set up. Full information, email, phone numbers, um, please pick that up. It's also available on, the, on, on websites as well. Now, I, without, you know, we've all been waiting for a little bit for this information, and without um, pausing anymore, I want to introduce to you um, the CEO of the data centers, Mr. Gene Kearns. Thanks, Gene. Well, as Carol said, my name is Gene Kern. I'm the CEO of the uh, data centers. I'm also the founder of the company and the originator of this idea uh, from concept through design now we've uh, taken this. I would like to thank you all for coming this evening. Um, you know, it's, it's good to be able to tell our side of the story and to tell you about this project and to tell you about, you know, some of the things that have been going on uh, within the facility to develop this project. Um, we would also like to thank Carol and the uh, city government for having us here and for putting together this site. And we'd like to thank the um, county and the uh, state for their you know, assistance in getting to this stage as well. There's also, as Carol mentioned, uh, plans underway for a second uh, meeting later on. We don't know exactly when that will occur. It depends on some of the questions tonight, I think, and uh, some of the design elements that are still underway. Uh, this seems to be echoing a lot. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but uh, I hear some feedback. Probably what it is. I don't know. Maybe just me. 
this idea, I originated this idea in 2002. Uh, okay, is that better? Or is it just those things? Yeah, it might be. <laughs> is that better? Okay. As we were saying, there's plans for a second community meeting after we get further along in the design stages of this project. You know, a project like this, this is a $1.1 billion project. It takes a long time to develop all the different aspects of it to get it to the stages where we need it to be. As I said, I originated the idea in 2002 and wrote a white paper about it way back in that day. We actually started working on this in 2006, trying to get the design concepts together, get the technical details put together. And then in 2011, we actually formed the data centers, uh, the company, the data centers LLC, and actually began hiring people and beginning to actual true work on the project. And we've grown our team ever since then. And the primary driver for doing this is I'm an efficiency expert, an IT efficiency expert. That is what I do for a living. I'm an IT consultant, been so since the early 80s. Part of the, my background comes from my service in the Marine Corps and just how I came about driving things to get things done. So when we began to assemble a team, I looked for IT industry experts and we have found quite a few of them. Bob Kreisman, who is the president of the company at this point in time, has come from Jones Lang LaSalle, which helps build and design large-scale data centers throughout the United States for companies like Goldman Sachs and many of the very largest banks and insurance companies around. Bruce Myatt, who is our CTO, uh, actually came from the West Coast and has worked for companies like Cisco Hennessy and other large-scale building and contracting companies throughout the United States, building data centers and designing them as well. Uh, he, his engineering, those, are, those guys are both engineers. They have extensive, more than 30-year um, careers in the, in the industry doing both electrical and um, mechanical engineering. Here today we have with us Michael Bednar on the end. Michael is our chief sustainability officer. He's an environmental engineer. Uh, he's been with us uh, for four years now. He's been working a great deal on this project. Uh, helping us to streamline a lot of the different energy pieces of it and um, the environmental solutions. Um, you'll soon meet Andrea Wolf, who is uh, going to do most of the pre presenting tonight. Andrea is our executive vice president of the company. She has an uh, extensive background in IT, human relations, and uh, works extensively with our people to generate wellness programs as well as um, many of the business aspects on the financial side of what we do. Uh, the big guy there in the middle is Cole Bauer. Cole is our vice president of site engineering, actually runs our construction teams on the sites. Somewhere along here is, uh, there's Brian Honish down there. Uh, Brian, stand up. Brian is our vice president of business development. He works on sales. Um, he also is part of our community relations team. Next to him is Tom Gallo, uh, who recently retired from one of the labor unions in Philadelphia and is now our vice president of labor relations. He does a lot of the um, discussions with the government and with uh, the labor unions and with our contractors on contracting and uh, the, the aspects that go around that. Um, that's it for the team right now. We're, um, we're lean. <laughs> we're not a real big company. We don't try to be a big company. Uh, we approach this project. It's a huge project to be doing. We have partnered with Lexton Capital out of New York uh, City um, they're represented here tonight is Tom uh, Ross. Tom is um, a longtime Delawarean, and um, he works for Lexington Capital. That's our financing partners. And that's basically the entire team as it exists today. So we have some really bright people on board, and it's, you know, and it takes a lot of people to bring a vision to fruition. And what I'm trying to accomplish here is to change the data center industry in a way that hasn't been done before. Data centers are energy hogs. They use huge amounts of power, and they use it mostly inefficiently. And they use it both to use electricity to, to run the computers, but they all use, also use it very inefficiently to cool those computers. This design is meant to overcome those issues in typical data centers and to be very, very efficient, both on creating the power 
using the power, and then dissipating the power. Because all those things have to be done in a data center on a regular basis, 24 by 7, to keep those large scale data centers up and running and to keep any size data center up and running. Now you will hear about the time and care and effort that we have put into planning for this. This is literally seven years so far into this project and we're not done yet. We still have three years to go before we open the doors to this facility. Uh, we have two years of construction and a couple months of commissioning plus some we have another six months of planning just to do to get to the stage where we can break ground on it. We, what we, data centers, one of the things that drives us is we want to be good corporate citizens and we want to be good neighbors to the people we're working with and around. You know, there's been a lot of um, facts put out there that are not accurate and we'd like to correct that today. You know, we'd like to make sure that you understand completely what we're doing and how we're doing it. And that's part of the story that we're going to do today. A big piece of what we're trying to create here wraps around jobs, high paying jobs. You know, the technology industry is huge in the United States. The United States has about 50% of all the data centers in the world today. And most of them are very inefficient. Um, you might have heard of a lot of these data centers down in North Carolina. They're down there because the power is very cheap and they're very inefficient. But the power is cheap and that's why they're down there. We're building in between New York and, and DC because it's the basic route where 18% of all internet traffic comes along these railroad tracks here in, in Newark. That's a huge amount of data passing through here every day. And we think that by locating here in this location, we can service both markets. And that's part of the key driver for why our business model drove us to locate here. By the end of this meeting, we hope you will understand exactly what this project is and why it makes so much sense for this area. We also hope that you will understand what it is not. And that's very important because our objective tonight is to set the record straight. You know, there's been a lot of misinformation out there and we'd like to make sure that you understand completely what we are truly doing here. So several of my team members are here to help us tonight and I'd like to introduce to you Andrea Wolf. Thank you, Jean. This is an amazing crowd. Welcome, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for coming out to talk to us tonight about this special project. We appreciate your time and your interest in the data centers, and we have a great story to tell about this idea that's been about 10 years in the making. We're excited about bringing this facility to Newark and being part of your community. Here's how we plan the evening. We'll share with you an overview of the project and we'll take some time to answer your questions afterwards. We do ask that you save your questions until we reach the end of the presentation. So whether you wrote your questions down, there's, you know, we'll also take questions as you raise your hand at the end of the presentation. In the event that you have questions that have not been answered at the end of the night, we'll place, it, we have, like I said, we have the cards in the back that you can fill out. Um, anything that's not answered, please let us know in the form of a note or an email to our, to our website and we'll answer those questions directly. So again, I'm going to thank you for coming out tonight. We really are excited to tell you about our project. So, I'm here to tell you about this data center project. It's using proven technologies to combine a data center and power in a different way, in a different way. It's so unique that we have a patent pending on this design. In the next few slides, I'll address how this project will enhance the existing infrastructure of Newark, will bring new jobs and businesses to Delaware, and will increase tax revenues for the community. You've already met Jean Kern and myself. Additionally with us tonight is Cole Bauer. He's our subject matter expert on-site engineering, and Michael Bednar, our Chief Sustainability Officer. And again, also Rick Berenger is our representative from Duffield & Associates um, who helps us in our, during our, the, these phases of our project. So what is TDC? 
The data centers is a veteran-owned company, as Jean explained. We have an executive team with over 200 years of combined experience in the data center, construct, data center design, construction, and management. Our mission is to design and develop and operate highly efficient data centers. The, the most important thing about this is that they are intended to be energy efficient and self-powered. I guess we advance the slide. Okay. So in terms of project information meetings, in addition to the meeting tonight, we've also met with other entities around, around Delaware. Um, including the University of Delaware, the STAR campus is where our facility is actually intended to be, be built, the Office of the Governor, the Delaware Economic Development Office, the City of Newark, Delaware Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Control, the Sierra Club, and the TDC project commitment was actually made with 1743 holdings in June, on June 14th of 2013. So some of you are probably asking, what's a data center? Jean described a little bit of that, about that earlier. But a data center is a specialized and tightly controlled facility that houses electronic equipment such as computers, servers, switches, and routers. Common businesses that own or operate in a, within a data center or utilize a data center would be banks, cloud providers like Amazon or eBay, internet search engines, such as Google, social media, such as Facebook, insurance companies, and the government. Basically, any company that uses a computer. So TDC is truly an industry leader. We have a patent pending design, which is a hybrid configuration of existing technologies. Its highly efficient design provides electricity and cooling within the data center. And most importantly, we don't ever want to go down. So the design protects the facility from grid outages. So we are also striving to set an industry standard of excellence. As you can see by this slide, all of these certifications are what we're intending to achieve or have a goal to achieve with this facility. We're committed from every aspect to be a leader for the data center industry. We are also globally recognized. This is a very exciting slide for us because, you know, earlier this year, TDC was recognized by the Data Center Dynamics Organization as a finalist for their prestigious award in the category of future thinking, future thinking and innovative design. This award highlights our design in the area of forward thinking and innovate, innovative design, risk management, most importantly, environmental compliance and natural resource utilization. The Wolf Technology Center is the name of the facility that's actually going to be on the STAR campus at the University of Delaware. Wolf One will be 100% electrically self-efficient, powered by a dedicated, environmentally efficient facility. Whoops, I guess I need to advance the slide. I apologize. There you go. Okay. So this is how the breakdown of the power will happen. We're looking at 108 megawatts of critical IT load, or basically the, I, the amount of electricity that we'll need to run the computer equipment. 90 megawatts of cooling, lighting, and ancillary, pro, ancillary systems. And another 50 megawatts of redundancy or backup power for a total load of 248 megawatts. So the Wolf Tech, I'm sorry. Did I go through that already? Did that. Okay. In terms of innovation and lead sustainable design, Wolf One has advanced, we have advanced natural gas turbines, which are low emission, 
The project will be using the best available control technology as well as the lowest achievable emission rate technology as defined by the state and federal governments. The efficient cogeneration of electricity and steam will also be used and in addition to that to, will be highly in addition to being highly efficient a significant amount of CO2 will be captured on site for beneficial use. This is probably the next slide is my favorite slide when we talk about corporate citizenship. I'm proud to be part of this company mainly because of these items. And I think it's very important that we as people, people, you in the community, we, we live in communities, we have families as well. So these are the things that we want to recognize and be cognizant of as we move forward in, in the organization. Um, we are designed to achieve LEED certification as defined by the U.S. Green Building Council. It's very important because it, goes to, it speaks to what goes on between us and you in the community and how we intend to protect the environment. We adhere to the University of Delaware building standards, and the facility design has been crafted to be aesthetically pleasing. I think some of you have walked around the room and seen some of the renderings that we have displayed of what the facility might look like. And these are the things that we, we take pride in, that we're going to have a, a facility that looks nice. It's not going to be some block building out there. So <laughs> some of the um, renderings that you'll see around the room is the administrative building with the data center behind it over here. This is the, CA, the uh, CHP. And then there's some other renderings out here, some of the same, I believe there's one at least of the overall site, all of it put together. So any questions about that, we'll answer during the question and answer period as well, okay? So along, again, along the lines of corporate citizenship, you know, a lot of you have questions about the noise. We are intending to minimize the noise, beginning with the source and then following it all the way through the sound path. And that would include indoor and, out, indoor and enclosed mechanical equipment, acoustical deadening technology, and additional measures including the use of mufflers, silencers, and other landscaping. It is our plan that the sound level as it reaches the closest home will be no louder than a normal conversation. So let's take a look at the facility a little bit closer. So this is one of the renderings that's on display, I believe it's this one here, of the administrative building and the data center behind it. So as we pointed out a moment ago, this is a picture of the administrati administrative building. Okay. So in terms of infrastructure improvements, What's going on in your community? So as a result of the, of the development of this brownfield site, TDC will quickly improve the quality of Newark's infrastructure. The site that we're looking at on the Star Campus is historically an industrial site. So the benefits of this is that we're revitalizing existing infrastructure. We're looking at the facility and it's, it's paved space. But we're coming in to enhance that and plant grass and you know, move that out of the way. So additional natural gas will also be brought to the site. Um, other Newark businesses could benefit from this additional availability of low cost, clean burning natural gas. And new high speed internet fiber optics will also be brought to the site. So in terms of job growth, of course this is near and dear to my heart being in human resources. Um, the project will boost the local and regional economy, it will create jobs in our community, bringing high paying quality jobs to Newark. We're looking at approximately 290 new full time jobs long term, an additional 50 part time jobs that will also be long term. Um, during the construction phase, TDC will generate thousands of good paying union jobs as well. So the construction phase will last approximately two to three years. Uh, additionally, our clients will create an additional 300 full-time jobs. According to industry trends in the data center industry, we see typically that when we build a data center or when a company builds a data center, the clients then bring in the same amount of people to add 
to, to take care of their own infrastructure um, pieces or their own work. So according to the industry trends, we'll see an additional 300 jobs coming along with the almost 300 jobs that we're putting in, or the over 300. In terms of community revenue enhancements, Wolf One will, play all, will pay all required local, municipal, state, and federal taxes, boosting the local revenue base. Locally purchased products and services will also be used. I mean, TDC and Wolf One are dedicated and committed to purchasing products and services locally for the, through the construction phase and ongoing as we're here in Newark. Whoops. I guess that's it. <laughs> I had one more slide, but, um, but I wanted to thank you all very much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate your interest in this project, and like I said, this is a project that is near and dear to all of our hearts. We've been working on it for a long time, and um, we're really happy that you've taken an interest for, for yourselves, for your community, and for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Andrea. Um, again, I'm, I'm Representative Paul Baumbach uh, from this district. Thank you for coming here. If you have, qu um, by the way, Andrea misspoke. I'm not going to be taking questions with hands up. Sorry, Catherine. But we have the, the questions we've already been collecting. More questions, please um, use that. I imagine that if you raise your hand, uh, the cards will be brought to you and can be collected from you. If you can get up and get it, that's even better. I want to mention two elected officials who have come in since, Senator Bethany Hall Long, sorry, three, Senator Bethany Hall Long, <laughs> Senator David Sokola, and Representative Edward Osinski. Um, this, uh, this proposed uh, uh, installation uh, is within the 25th Representative District and the 8th Senate District, um, and so John Kowalko and David Sokola are the representative and senator respectively for this location, they would both very much welcome any input, any questions, any opinions. John's email is john.kowalko, K-O-W-A-L-K-O, at state.de.us, and he wants your feedback, if you're, especially if you're a resident of the 25th district. David Sokola's email is david.sokola, S-O-K-O-L-A, at state.de.us. All of us elected officials do truly welcome your input, and we seek your input on this. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I now have stacks and stacks of questions uh, to work through. Uh, my job is to take, and actually help by the city staff, um, collect similarly themed questions and try to get, okay, we have a question about water consumption. Let's, let's put five questions into one question and have the data center um, personnel um, field that question to help answer some of the questions we have in our heads. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if there's a thick, there we go. Okay, we have, we have emissions is gonna be the topic. Um, and so we wanna, uh, I think we'd like to have maybe some specifics on the amount of CO2 that will be produced, the amount of CO2 that will be released, um, and, and maybe something uh, regarding, or also, I know, I'm sorry, I'm not a, a physicist or, or a chemist, uh, the nitrous oxide, is that right? So we can talk about that perhaps also. Um, you're going to be on the, the firing line on this, right? Well, uh, it's going to be a combination. <laughs> sure. Start with the CO2. Okay. Uh, and you want to turn it on first. Okay. So uh, I'm Cole Bauer, um, in charge of site engineering. Um, speak up. Uh, is that better? Okay. Um, so with, the, with regard to CO2, um, we touched on it in the presentation. We're actually going to be building um, a CO2 recapture uh, plant right here. Uh, near the generators, and we'll be capturing. Um, we're going to be capturing most of the CO2, and they will be purifying it and liquefying it, and then using it for um, the soda industry and other beverage industries that that purchase CO2. Um, so now for the the NO, I think that's probably you, Rick. So yeah. How much? Um, we'll be looking. At, the percentage we're going to try to capture 100% of the of the CO2 and process it. Um, right now, we've got contracts for 45% of of the overall outtake. Um, 
but that's for that we have two phases of this project so it, at the outset of phase one we'll be capturing very nearly all of the co2 and then as phase two gets built we'll be uh, capturing more so the goal of our company is to capture almost all the co2 coming out of the it, plant. court in addition to the percentage of recapture i'm going to try to try to get some of this stuff okay um in addition to the percentage of recapture, can you also talk about gross quantities that you're talking about? Is that something you can address? Yeah, yeah gross quantity is about, uh, was it 2,000? Yeah, it's 2,000 tons per day of CO2. Um, so does that answer everybody's question? So, so 2,000 tons per day of CO2 to yes, be sir. produced. Your goal initially is 45% 40, recapture? Yeah, that's a full, uh, full phase one and phase two build out. Uh, phase one build out is what's occurring now. Phase two is scheduled to be built out within the next five to six years. Um, that so let me just, if you don't mind, no, let me just ahead. get a little more yeah. clarification. Um, at maximum capacity, and let's for right now mm -hmm. not talk about uh, not, phase not one, a, two. Let's just talk about production, yeah. and then we'll worry about uh, resale or okay. recapture and resale. Maximum production of CO2 mm -hmm. and nitrous oxide. In, in gross amounts. Can you provide that? Well, we're just talking about CO2 right now. Okay. And that's the we'll 2,000 tons per day. And we're going to recapture. And that's when, with both phases in? Correct. Okay. That's at the full build out. Now, okay. the, the, uh, the NO, uh, Rick, will need to talk about that. Okay. And on the CO2, I heard you say you're, you're expecting at least 45% is a minimum mm -hmm. um, of recapture and resale? Well, is that? Is that yes, the, correct. That's what we have under contract right now. And the rest would go upward? Yeah, correct. Okay. Phase one, uh, the phase one data center is this building, and then phase two is an identical building. Uh, so the square footages are uh, exact, exactly the same. So this, this, when we generate power for this phase one, that represents 50% of the CO2. And when we get into phase two, that's the other 50%. That's correct. We're only, we'll only be installing uh, enough generation for phase one plus our redundancy to support our data center because we're, com we're, we're not going to be an off-taker of electricity from the grid. We're producing all of our electricity on our site. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's that? The, the question is if there's not a sufficient market uh, for the CO2, the assumption is, does it go upward? The, well, we, 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 <laughs> yeah, it gets admitted if we don't, if we don't, if we don't offtake it, yeah. yeah. Guys, um, please, okay, we've got a lot of people in here and we're trying to get as much information as we can, okay? Um, okay, can we move on to the, the, Actually, I, just, I, have one, I have one thing to add for the, for, to answer your question a little, a little more completely. Um, from a permitting standpoint, we're permitting for the full CO2 going to the atmosphere, but we're recapturing it because the way air permitting works, you, you have to, you, you permit what you emit, and, but we do what you could emit. Thank you, Gene. Um, so, so what you're saying is that when you go to DENREC for the approvals, you are going and requesting a permit for up to the 2,000 tons per day. And to the extent that the that you're able to find customers for it and your technology for recapture works, then you'll be emitting much less than that and reselling the portion you have customers for. Is that accurate? That's correct. That's exactly correct. Okay. Can we move on to the NO to the whatever sure. the formula is? Um, to answer the question about nitrous oxide emissions, uh, the plant will generate about 80 tons of or have the potential to generate about 80 tons of nitrous oxide per year um, per year I'll try um, the the technology that it will be used to in the plant um, first off the the engines and the turbines that are generating the primary power are going to be lean burn uh, technology, so they produce less nitrous oxides per unit of heat uh, than conventional technology has. And then uh, we're following that with a 
selective catalytic reduction unit, which will reduce the amount of NO2 that is coming out of the plant to about two parts per million by volume. Um, that is state-of-the-art technology for pollution control, and that is a better rate than just about any plant in existence. Uh, beyond that is the intrinsic design of the plant, which is a cogen and um, combined cycle plant. So for every unit of power being produced by the plant in either steam or electricity, there are actually less emissions than what happens in conventional power or electric production. Okay. Um, sorry, I, I'm, I'm focusing on the next question. Um, and I didn't hear it, not that I'm seeking, oh, sorry, one quick thing. If you have a phone that's gonna make noise, please silence it, and I follow my own direction, so please consider that. Um, new topic, let's go for um, sound. Let's address sound. The concerns of it, what decibels, what are you doing? To, I know we, we saw a slide up there with some of the steps, but in layman's terms, um, we, we have a three-year-old or so who, who lives a half mile or so from the site there. Okay. Um, what kind of sounds can she expect? Um, what will she not be able to hear well? Um, can you put it in our terms? Okay. And then also maybe reference what the city's uh, noise ordinance levels are okay. and what specifically you're doing to, to accomplish that. I know I'll leave oh, it to you. Yeah, that's fine. there's follow-up questions, if you write them and you hand them to me, I will try to do that, but not in the middle of the discussion. So if Eden, you get something to me, I'll try to get it in there, okay? Okay, um, the, basically what we're looking at is, uh, the, as we said in the presentation, uh, the closest house to the site will be uh, a maximum of 45 decibels, which is uh, about, uh, it's actually a lot quieter than this PA system, it's what would be considered normal conversation volume. So, and, and to achieve that, we're doing several things. All of the rotating equipment um, will all be in sound attenuated buildings uh, to, to contain that radiated sound. And the, uh, the, sm the, um, the discharge of the generators will be equipped with silencers uh, so that the, any sound that's generated at the stack will be minimized. And then around the around the edges of the uh, the site, we're going to be, do a combination of berming and trees and landscaping features to uh, contain the sound and to direct the sound upward so that it doesn't um, doesn't go out into the residential neighborhoods. Um, is the is the berm designed to be on all sides or on the north side? And I, I didn't see in your drawings the orientation of where the tracks are, where the Christina Parkway is, et cetera. Yeah, this is the best one. The tracks actually run along this tree line here. So that's, those are the tracks along the north side of the site. And then Christiana, oh, it's a Christiana Boulevard, runs along the bottom end here. So does that orient the site for you? Yes, that's very helpful. So on the left side, which is on the Christina Parkway side, is there any, is there any um, physical Absolutely. barrier. Absolutely. We'll be doing berms wherever the, wherever the, the CHP facility borders the, the property line. We'll be doing berms, so basically from you know, somewhere in this location all the way around to contain the sound on our site and not allow it out into the residential neighborhoods. Can, can Combined you, heat and power. Um, can you tell me approximately the distance to the nearest residences in the different directions? Actually. Do you know that? It's a half mile. Yeah, it's approximately a half mile. Okay. Um, light pollution. Can you talk about what level as residents we're going to come to expect if, if this is approved? What kind of uh, glow there will be in the evenings? You know, that uh, kind of thing. Th there won't be a glow. Um, we're, uh, as was mentioned in, in the presentation, we're using uh, the LEED standards. Um, and uh, the LEED standards are very concerned about light pollution and about uh, and, and that segues into energy, uh, energy savings to, to reduce your energy footprint. Um, so all the buildings will be equipped with uh, occupancy sensors on the lighting so that if people are not in the areas, the lights will be off. Um, and then at nighttime, we will have um, automatic shades on all the exterior windows so that at night the shades will come down and contain the light within the building. 
Um, and then our site lighting will be, uh, and you can see it on, on, on here if you look closely, obviously it's too far away, but um, all this, the site lighting will be limited to the parking areas and to walking areas to, to and from the parking areas to the buildings and will all be directed down at the pavement. So we're, we're, we're not building a, you know, uh, a stadium here. We're not going to have a glow in the sky. We want to keep it low profile. We want to, you know, we want to keep the light pollution to a minimum. Um, while we're on the building, the height, what's the maximum height you have? Is that for the, the can I call it a smokestack? Or is that, did I see that correctly? Well, now that you already said it. <laughs> um, so um, the, the stacks will be about 170 feet tall. Um, what's that? 110 feet tall, I'm sorry. Um, which is actually sh uh, shorter than the water towers that are in the area. Um, and the buildings will be right at about 110, 100 feet tall. So it'll be... It's not going to be a you know a huge eyesore because the the water towers actually there's a water tower down this end of the uh, the star campus you you can't you can't see that so you're not going to be able to see these stacks from miles away. Um, can you talk about what you're doing uh, for remediating the brownfield portion of this the the any materials that may be underground the stuff that's on the surface can you talk about that? Uh, this portion of the star campus is actually a fairly clean subsurface area there uh, for those of you who have been following the story there uh, there is an old incinerator pit uh, that has a, a plan in place for how to deal with it uh, during redevelopment any portion of it that is disturbed needs to be excavated and removed from the site um, there is an area of uh, where there's a benzene concentration in the groundwater that requires a vapor barrier be constructed if an occupied building is going over it. Um, neither of these areas have any spread outside of the site. They're very confined, very contained, and DENREC is well aware of them and has developed a plan for addressing them. Anything that is excavated uh, from, for instance, the incinerator pit to accommodate grading will be removed to a uh, licensed and permitted disposal facility.